Okay, and welcome to the next video in this sequence. Um, this one should be relatively short. I want to look at uh, the exhaust gas temperature gauge, um, explain to you what we're trying to achieve, why that's an important gauge, and we'll use a text gauge just to monitor uh, how this works. But text gauges are relatively simple, so it shouldn't take too long to set this up. So let's just have a look at uh, where the gauge is and why we need it. So when you're flying the cockpit, it's uh, here and it's relatively small to see and you sort of need to see the fine detail. Um, when you're flying, it does take your eye away from your main scan. So I do like to have this one actually on my stream deck so I can see what's going on. But let's have a uh, bit of a look at what, what the uh, exhaust gas temperature is about. Uh, really, it's a way of checking that you're running your uh, your engine as uh, efficiently as possible. And we measure the temperature of the uh, gas coming out of the exhaust. Uh, at the moment, you won't be able to see my throttle and my mixture, but I've got mixture at 100%. And if I push my throttle up, and I'll let you hear what's going on. Uh, you can see uh, that the RPM has gone up, the fuel flow has gone right up. We're, we're really in, uh, as you would have on the runway taking off, full power, full everything on. And what we're doing is we're throwing as much uh, of uh, fuel as possible at the engine. In fact, more than we can burn with the oxygen available. And you can see now the temperature is rising in the exhaust gas. And that's going up. The it's not calibrated to anything in particular, but we need to know the calibration because I'm going to create this gauge, so we need to see it. But realistically, when you're flying, yeah, you, know, you don't really care the actual absolute temperature. What you care about is have we reached uh, a peak temperature. So what happens is that we're throwing more fuel at it than it can burn. So there's unburnt fuel coming through at the moment and that is helping to cool the engine as you take off there's not really enough airflow to cool the engine so the unburnt liquid vaporized fuel takes some of the uh, temperature away um, and it's but it's also throwing money away your fuel flow is far too high but that's okay for just for the brief takeoff period uh, when you get to the cruise part of the flight that's when we want to start adjusting it and also the amount of oxygen available to you reduces as you get higher so roughly every two or three thousand feet of climb you would be looking at adjusting your fuel mixture to make sure that it's uh, as um, kind of efficient as possible so I'm going to emulate this now it's not very good doing it at uh, ground level but if I reduce my mixture you'll probably see that the indicator here goes up it uh, increases in temperature as I take some of the fuel out of it you also notice I lose power but uh, you should see this adjust as it gets closer and closer to the 100% burn so we get less unburnt fuel now and our fuel flow will go down and that's good you, if you run your engine with uh, too rich for some time you'll clog up your spark plugs and do all sorts of nasty damage if I go down too low, if I put in less fuel than I need, that's not good either. Uh, it's not going to combust properly. You get knocking in the engine. That's not great. So what we try and do is to find the peak of the exhaust gas temperature and then run it slightly rich to be on the safe side. So we get the peak and then we just go slightly over that peak and it drops again. But it, it doesn't show very well when we're on the ground. It shows much better when you're around 3,000 feet and you can really see what's going on with that. But I need to see these values I need because I'm going to need those for the next part. So let's reduce the fuel flow, reduce the noise a little bit and have a look at how we do that with the Stream Deck. So if I get my Stream Deck software across, what I really want to do is to put a text gauge on there and work through here to show you uh, how we set this up. And this, this one's relatively simple. I'll also do one for the throttle one for the mixtures. You can actually see the values that I'm doing um, because you can't see my levers. So I've got a little presentation to try and explain how this gauge works. This is one, this one's relatively simple. The um, gauge gives us three levels, three layers graphically to work with. There's a background layer, 
which normally for me would just be a solid color a solid black or something like that but you can upload your own custom made uh, backgrounds um, because you can have this detecting whether something is on or off so for instance you could have a button that you press the gauge could also be a button and as you press the button you can turn it on and say it's got a green background when it's on a red when it's off or a red when it's warning it could be used for master caution warnings and you can also um, give it a key action so you can press it and it will also show you a value in the middle so we have the next layer which will be the variable whichever variable it is we are uh, focusing on in fact you can have up to three variables placed on here um, so that's the variable we're looking at and there'll be th up to three of them um, the offset uh, adds or subtracts a value from uh, whatever value you've, you've got and the multiplier uh, can multiply divide um, sort of thing you could use it for translate it between centigrade and Fahrenheit that kind of thing and you can look at the format how many decimal places there are going to be and how many leading zeros again we don't need to know this for this gauge I'm making and uh, here this is how you place it on the screen the, the variable comes up in the middle and you can shift it left and right or up and down as you prefer uh, so zero here is there in the center and you can shift it around and change the font and all those nice things so that's there um, the text it will be a text in the middle here and this area here will be transparent so that we can see through to whichever background you've got here okay so there's a transparency there automatically created for us and there's one more layer and that's the title which for me will be exhaust gas temperature or throttle and that go, will go wherever I place it as if I've got that drop down so I can choose colors and fonts and this background area here again it will be a transparency so we can see through we can see through we can see through to your background so that's how that this gauge works graphically so let's go back to our stream deck software so my title will be EGT exhaust gas temperature and I need to get that variable which I will get from axes and O's and I'll get it by using the script editor and finding my variable and I want my exhaust gas temperature and it will be this one here the engine exhaust gas temperature so we'll do our right click so we've copied it and pasted in here you could have more than one engine so it needs to know which engine you were looking at but here we've only got one so it'll be engine number one and don't forget to submit and you can see there's our temperature and I can change that temperature that's working fine so let's do the same for my throttle and I need the variable so we'll pick that from here general engine throttle lever position right hand click and paste it in here that'll be number one submit and the last one will be a text gauge for my mixture Uh, general engine mixture or yeah we'll do that one right hand click and we shall now put that into here and that's at 100 percent that's all correct so let's go back to my flight simulator and I'm going to put a close-up view of those three buttons there so you can actually see the values and let's zoom in a bit on this so you can really see what's going on here so um, 
We can keep an eye on the fuel flow, we can keep an eye on the RPM and the exhaust gas temperature. I'm at 100% mix and let's give it some throttle. What I'm trying to find out is the temperature that this uh, gauge becomes live at. It's not interested in the lower temperatures and we're at 386, 390 degrees and it's not interested in that because it, it's of no value to us. We're looking at uh, where it is when it's around the peak. So this is a restricted gauge and we need to keep an eye on the temperature that this part here starts to move and keep an eye on the exhaust gas temperature but around 670 degrees is my calculation of when that actually becomes live. So we're increasing the temperature because I'm increasing the throttle and when I get to 670 you should see the uh, slider, the point to move at 658, there it goes. What I'm looking for next is the graduation, how much the temperature varies as I get to these various points. So I'm on the second one here and I'll bring the temperature in. Let's cross that second point. And I think it should cross about 760 degrees. So let's reduce our temperature and see where it crosses. So 730 degrees, sorry. It goes up in 30s as far as I can work out. So that's 730 and it's crossing. Let's go down to the next one. That should be about 700. So it's 718, 714. And we're coming towards the 700 as it crosses that spacing. Let's go up and again and check it out. So we're coming towards 730. Next one should be about 760. So these are the calculations I need to do so I can work out how I'm going to set up the slider gauge in the next video. And let's give it full whack, 100%, and see where we get to. It takes quite some time to settle. Uh, a lot of metal to cool up, or to heat up as we do this. It takes some time to get there. Uh, and that's why when we're leaning in the air we need to keep an eye on it because we can think we've reached peak give it 30 seconds or so to settle but you should see it's slowing down now it's getting towards peak now if I bring the mix down a bit we'll have less of that unburnt fuel taking the temperature away so we should see this going up again faster so let's pull the mixture back And you see we're increasing the temperature quite dramatically and bringing the fuel flow down. We'll lose some RPMs doing it because we're doing this at ground level. But there's my 850, 853. And eventually if I keep taking the mix down, you'll see that it drops below our peak. And that's dropped below the peak now, so we need to go slightly richer of that. And that'll be our most efficient fuel burn for this altitude and that amount of throttle. Okay, I hope all that makes sense. Uh, a little bit about how the exhaust gas temperature helps us to gauge the efficiency of the engine and uh, reduce the amount of uh, environmental damage and the damage to our wallet as uh, we keep throwing fuel away and uh, increase the, long the uh, length of life of your engine. And Okay, next video we'll turn the exhaust gas temperature gauge into a slider so it slides backwards and forwards and looks like the one on the screen. See you in the next video.